the Terminator franchise. Before I go into the first two, I should probably say my personal favorite is the first one, and I wouldn't really have minded if there hadn't been a second one, or if the second one had belonged to a different franchise, maybe been the beginning of a different franchise, or the only entry into another franchise. With that said, I realize that Terminator 2 is a pretty good fucking movie, and overall I guess the better one. That's not gonna stop me from expressing my opinion about it, and I do want to nip it in the bud. Don't bother writing and telling me how fucking great the movie is. I realize how fucking great the movie is. And yes, I know some of the stuff I'm gonna mention is nitpicking, but a lot of tiny little nits, you wind up with a pretty fucking big nit at the end of it, and that bothers me, and that really doesn't happen very much with the first one. Perhaps you're wondering why I have two copies of the original Terminator. You see, what happened was, first, I got the VHS. Then later, I went ahead and purchased this, which is the special edition DVD. Now, I'm pretty sure that they're the exact same cut, so you might be wondering why on earth did I keep the VHS one once I'd gotten the DVD one? The answer is quite simple. The DVD one fucks up the gun sound. You know, the Terminator's pistol, the 45 long slide, I mean, hardcore fans already realized that the original cut of the Terminator only had mono sound. Simply because they didn't have the money to afford stereo and still afford all the special. So when they did the special edition DVD, they went ahead and redid the sound because who wants to buy a DVD that has mono sound? Especially when it's such a popular movie, you know, this isn't some obscure little thing from, you know, many decades ago. Now, all that is well and good, but they changed the sound of the pistol. You know, where in this one, it sounds like it's gonna fuck someone up, you know, like a fucking magnum, a miniature cannon or something. In this one, it's so plain. I think this one might actually sound more like the 45s used in the second movie. And I'm sorry, better quality sound or not, I prefer the long slide to sound like this. God, I'm a dork. Anyway, with that out of the way, if you haven't gotten this one and you're a fan of the first, I do recommend it. It's got some really great extras, deleted scenes, a bunch of interesting pre-production stuff, and a couple of pretty good documentaries about the movie. Anyway, as you might have already guessed by now, I fucking love The Terminator. To me, the movie is like a fucking grip, like a vice grip. I mean, a medieval kind of vice, not like prostitution and stuff. You know, from the first frame to the last, it's just got you glued to the edge of your seat. And it's also like a double-edged razor blade, like no matter how you approach this fucking thing, it's gonna hurt. Anyway, I better stop comparing this movie to stuff, otherwise you might think I'm like a sadist or a masochist or... What's that word for the one that is kind of both, you know, the, the kind of person that gets off on hurting others as well as hurting himself? Religious fundamentalist, that's it. Anyway, the movie just does not let go. And once it's over and you're released again, you might not be in, like, the best of moods, but you're pretty satisfied if you went into it expecting a dark sci-fi action thriller, you know? The thing never fucking slows down. It manages to have an incredibly fast pace and yet not overstimulate us. Something is constantly happening. The Terminator is in like every other scene and when you don't see him, you know he's right fucking behind them. And he's so fucking intimidating and threatening that I would argue that you can almost call this movie a horror movie. At least add that as one of the genres. The Terminator really fucking feels like what Kyle Reese describes. And I know I could quote pretty much every single fucking line the guy has in the movie if I don't stop myself, so I'm gonna keep it to a minimum. It absolutely will not stop ever until Sarah Connor is dead. And in the police station, he'll wade through you, he'll reach into our throat and pull our fucking heart out. You know, throughout the movie, you fear the fucking Terminator. 
And then there are a couple of occurrences where Cameron lulls you into a fake sense of security, and then pulls the carpet out from under you so you land on broken glass. Seriously, the one fucking time the Terminator takes a break, it's to make sure that he can still somewhat blend in. And he's so fucking methodical in repairing himself, too. The arm and the eye. Even the flashbacks have action in them. Seriously, every single fucking flashback, go back and watch them, ends with it seeming like they're gonna die. You know, Kyle Reese is gonna die. You know, the biggest victory they have in the flashbacks is when Kyle Reese and that female soldier... I guess that kind of goes against him saying women are good fighters. Anyway, destroy the HK with the tank treads, and that costs them the female soldier, seemingly the guy manning the gun in the car, and probably the car, and Kyle is trapped there in the fucking wreck. Then there's the other scene where a Terminator gets into the bunker and kills everyone. Soldiers, children, dogs. We really fucking feel like this is it. If they do not win on that night in 1984, humanity is fucking doomed. I love how fucking bleak and dark and unrelenting it is. Maybe there is some immaturity, some bitterness, some anger in it, but is that such a bad thing? Every young person needs to get that out of his system. And Kyle Reese, I fucking love Michael Bean. Michael Bean knows how to play a badass soldier that you can just get behind. He shows it here, he shows it in Aliens, he even shows it in Tiberian Sun. In spite of all the camp in that script. Intentional or otherwise. This was the first movie I ever saw him in, and I just have not been able to get enough of the guy since. I love the honor in his character. I love the guerrilla combat he uses when necessary. I can't get enough of his dedication. You know, as much as he knows that he's scaring and probably traumatizing Sarah, he doesn't let up because he knows he's right. Th to me, there isn't a single note in the performance that's off. There isn't a single line of his that isn't fantastic. I also love the character development and the way exposition is delivered in the middle of chases or while hiding out. If you think about it, with the use of very few flashbacks, James Cameron paints a very compelling picture of this future that we see fairly little of, and shouldn't see very much of. You know, so much of the most important stuff is said by Kyle while he's driving around in the car, or, you know, while they're hiding out, knowing that if the Terminator, they're in immense danger again. Also, in this movie, unlike Every single other Terminator movie, when the Terminator is close, you fucking believe he's going to kill his target. Look at how fucking close he is again and again just within the first 10 or 15 minutes of him finding the real Sarah Connor. The right Sarah Connor, whatever. You know, for example, the car blows up and he jumps at them, smashes his arm through the window, grabs her shirt, starts pulling her... You just, you know that if Kyle hadn't, you know, made that cool little spin with the car and thrown the Terminator off, he would have fucking murdered her. It never feels like he's holding back. And very rarely is the danger on account of people doing stupid things. There is the going to the police station and her calling her mother and telling them they're at the Tiki Motel. But those are in character, it's because people don't realize how fucking dangerous the Terminator is. Plus, the calling her mother bit, the Terminator is fucking crafty. You know, she didn't know that it could imitate voices. And I fucking love that pan, just, you know, going across, you see all that destruction, you see the path, and then it ends on his face. I love you too, sweetheart. That's so fucking creepy, so effective. The war really feels unwinnable in the flashbacks. I'd also say the effects hold up pretty well. Okay, so it's fairly obvious when it's not really Arnold, it's, you know, a rubber replica. I guess it turns into a Series 600 or something. And yes, you can tell that the skeleton at the end is stop motion most of the time because, you know, of how it moves. But still, they integrate it pretty fucking well.